All right, uh, we're going to call order the Cuyahoga County Council regular meeting of Tuesday, July the 28th. Clerk, please call the roll. Calling the roll, Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Germana? Here. Mr. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Schron? Mr. Schron is absent this evening. Ms. Conwell? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Ms. Brown? Here. Mr. Hairston? Here. Ms. Simon? Here. Mr. Greenspan? Here. And Council President Brady? Here. There is a quorum. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Item 4, silent meditation. I have no recommendations, each to their own. Thank you. Any public comment related to the agenda? Yes, Mr. President. Um, I have uh, uh, Reverend uh, Pinkney Butts. All righty. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, 2015 uh, 0150. I see that you're making efforts to get a modernization loan, and when I when I approach your agenda items, and please forgive me for not looking up at you for uh, looking down because my time runs out so quickly, and I want to stay uh, focused to your paperwork. Uh, it, it talks about us not being a, a a lender, I mean a borrower, not to borrow. And I I have when I looked at that, I was hoping that I could say something today that as you all speak publicly on your uh, social media, that someone will see the endeavor that this county is doing to build up the community for the needs of uh, the people and be willing to donate financially into your endeavors. And I have the power of life in my tongue to speak that into existence so that you will, we will not have to appear as beggars and borrowers in Cuyahoga County. For 2015, 0151, uh, the same rule applies. And I'm thankful for 2015-0152 for the, and, and 153 for the donation of the burial plots because sometimes people find themselves in predicaments that they don't uh, believe that they uh, would ever find themselves in. And, and at that time, it, that is very conducive and very convenient. And I commend and I applaud and I play that some Others will follow suit. And I am in agreement with uh, the unexpired term for Mary War for 2015-0133 uh, for her being reinstated into the uh, Adams Board uh, as uh, a member of the Adams Board. And for the 2015-0131, uh, when uh, Sharna Sherman uh, does serve on the Cuyahoga Arts and Cultural Board of Trustees, I asked that she would uh, review and look at the needs for the African American uh, Cultural Museum, the History Museum, that's over uh, in, on Crawford, because it needs some attention. And I have been making also an effort to have someone to come together with me so we can have a Native American Museum. As I look at each one of you, I see some Apache and I see some different types of Native American in you, uh, blood lineage in you, and we need to have some of that come forth because we don't want it to be camouflaged and sugar coated and covered up with uh, European and African and Venezuelan and all these different other ethnicities coming into America, and we don't want to lose our, our heritage as well. And then I also saw that you were going to. Oh, and the, for the Community-Based Correctional Facility Governing Board, would you please just allow me just two more minutes for, so that I can finish what I have for the agenda, or do I need to come back later? Go Council ahead. President. Go ahead. Okay. For the Community-Based Correctional Facility Governing Board, 
Would you please um, put some preachers that really know the word in there so we can really do what we do as preachers? It says to set the captives free. And some of the preachers are even bound up in some stuff. And until we get some people busy and get their hands busy and doing some things and keep them a little active, then some things are not going to be what they should be. The church is to be the beacon for the community. And it's closed. It's not open except for during offering time and tithe and offering time. And for the community-based correctional facility governing board, when we're thinking about people being punished or being disciplined for something or the avenue of correction, we need to have the preacher in place. And I will take my seat. Uh, I will give you the, the other comments. But before I do that, I want to just say something about um, Mr. Carroll being uh, reappointed or re-implemented into the Health and Human Services Department. That's a very critical department because it affects everything else that's, that's encompassed in your decision-making processes. And I brought some information this evening uh, to my council representative I, for the purpose of my safety. I'm not going to say your name, but you know who you are, and I do too. Um, I brought some information this evening because I want Mr. Carroll to know how imperative it is that we stick with the word. When it talks about gossiping, tail-bearing, backbiting, and, and these different things, and the Ten Commandments, and we talk about not provoking your children to wrath, and these different things that are in the volume of the book, we need to relook at some things, because the information I brought this evening encompasses many things. It didn't just impact me. It didn't just impact my family. It didn't just impact Cuyahoga County. It impacted our nation. I am blessed, Council President Brady, to be alive. And I have things on here that I wouldn't dare embarrass you, my family, my children, or anyone else. But there are some things that need to be readdressed. And before people go into other counties and other states, disclosing and discussing things with people, they need to have their facts straight. I ask that Mr. Carroll would take the time to look and review what I've brought, not just for my sake, but for the sake of each of us, because I could have done so many things, but God kept me. I didn't use drugs, and I didn't use violence, and I didn't go in raging in people's offices and I didn't do a lot of things that I even had a legal right to do because God is a keeper. But we've got to realize that it is really time for the restoration of the family. And I will come back afterwards uh, for the public comment for the non-agenda items, if that will be acceptable. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Pinkney. Is there any um, other public comment related to the agenda? Not at this time. I'm going to, um, thank you, I'm going to revert back to, um, I guess, the roll call. We uh, uh, excused Councilman Tron's absence. He's out of town during the work session, but I forgot to do it for the regular session. So I'd like a uh, second. second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of excusing Jack? Uh, the aye. aye. The ayes have it. Jack Schron is officially... Uh, Excused, his absence is excused. Um, next, uh, item six, approval of the minutes. Um, I'd like to approve the minutes of July 14th, Committee of the Whole, and the July 14th regular meeting minutes. Moved to motion. Moved to approve. Moved, seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Announcement from the council president uh, for I actually have an announcement um, I'm going to try this out to, today, and I think you I hope and I think you're going to like it um, We've been uh, discussing um, Various uh, approaches to improving the way in which council conducts its business at council and committee meetings as a result in order to be more efficient and provide more time for discussion I'm directing the clerk and her staff to read into the audio record all the legislation by abbreviated title 
beginning with this meeting and all subsequent meetings of council and committees. All legislative titles will remain in regular form on the agenda uh, and for transparency to the public. This directive is in accordance with Rule 9C and has been approved by the law director. This should um, uh, save us some time and just some unnecessary um, um, verbiage. Um, any message from the county executive? Yes, thank you. Uh, yesterday, uh, we uh, issued our second quarter financial report, which reflects the serious financial challenges that we face as a county. Councilman Greenspan and I uh, presented uh, that uh, report to the Plain Dealer Editorial Board yesterday, uh, and my thanks uh, to Councilman Greenspan for joining me. Uh, despite these challenges, uh, we must make sure that we continue to provide the best possible uh, job that we can providing services to the community. Um, in order to do that, uh, we're only as good as our uh, employees. Uh, we must continue to uh, attract and retain the best possible uh, people that work to work for us. Uh, employees in the bargaining units have been receiving 2% cost of living increases, as you know. Uh, at this point, uh, bargaining employees, uh, there's a serious compression issue between uh, non-bargaining and bargaining employees in the county. Uh, I know that uh, Representative uh, Councilwoman Conwell is uh, uh, well aware of that, having received the report from the PRC. Uh, and it requires a long-term solution that we are uh, beginning to work on. Uh, but. Um, uh, I'm pleased to say that we have decided to uh, uh, provide a 2% cost of living increase for executive non-bargaining uh, unit staff members uh, for 2015, uh, despite our financial uh, problems, and it will date uh, to January 1st of this year. We have to make sure that while we're not yet in a position to solve the uh, compression issue, that we don't exacerbate it, and by providing that, we will uh, not be exacerbating it. Uh, so I um, am pleased that we will be able to do that. And the response from our employees has been quite good, I will tell you. Uh, one other thing, I just want to mention that last Thursday, uh, the uh, uh, arts and culture levy uh, kickoff uh, uh, was held. It was very exciting to see uh, the breadth of support across the, the county for uh, that uh, uh, pr proposal. Council President Brady spoke there, uh, and a number of council members were in attendance. Uh, and I must say that the best part of being there uh, on Thursday was seeing Councilman Miller ride the carousel from Euclid Beach Park. <laughs> Thank you very much. I would have liked to have seen that myself. <laughs> Use my cell phone. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, all right, uh, legislation introduced by council. Uh, consideration of a resolution of council for third reading adoption. Resolution number 2015-0104, adopting various changes to the Cuyahoga County non-bargaining classification plan. Could I have a motion to adopt? Move to uh, approve. Second. Discussion? Um, yes, uh, President Brady, this resolution was fully vetted in the Human Resources and Appointment and Equity Committee. And we ask that council's approval. And any um, questions that you may have in regards to this, uh, HR Director uh, Lisa Durkin is here this evening. Any questions? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. Committee report and consideration of an ordinance of council for second reading. Ordinance number 2015-0012, amending section 407.27 of the county code establishing recusal requirements for appointees to county boards and commissions. This item will move to the um, meeting on the 11th, August the 11th, for consideration for third reading adoption. Legislation introduced by the executive. Okay, consideration of resolutions for first reading adoption under suspension of rules. Could I have a motion to suspend the rules? Mr. President, I move to suspend the rule. Second. In favor of suspending the rule, say aye. Aye. All nays. Ayes have it. The rules are suspended. 
Resolution number 2015-0145, amending biennial operating budget for 2015 by providing for additional fiscal appropriations, appropriation transfers, and cash transfers. Motion to adopt. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. President, this um, resolution, we asked uh, one question of the administration. The response was provided. My colleagues have a copy of, uh, at their station, and I urge uh, for their support and passage of this resolution. Is there a second for the motion? Second. Motion being made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0146, extending the appointment of Interim Director of Development, Nathan Kelly. Motion to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Say aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0147, extending the appointment of Interim Director of the Department of Health and Human Services, Matt Carroll. Move to adopt. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. Consideration of resolutions for first reading and referral to committee. Resolution number 2015-0148, making an award to Lane Inliner in the amount not to exceed $2,891,570 for the 2015 Sewer Rehabilitation Program. This will be referred to Public Works. Resolution number 2015-0149, authorizing a revenue-generating utility agreement with City of Brooklyn for maintenance and repair of storm sewers, sanitary sewers, and water lines. This will also go to Public Works. Resolution number 2015-0150, authorizing an economic development fund redevelopment and modernization loan in the amount not to exceed $650,000 to Keystone Tailored Manufacturing for the benefit of a project located at 4600 Tiedemann Road, Brooklyn. Let's go to economic development. Resolution number 2015-0151, authorizing an amendment to a contract with Economic and Community Development Institute Incorporated for management of the Cuyahoga County Micro Enterprise Revolving Loan Fund to extend the time period to January 31st, 2017 and for additional funds. This will also go to ED. Resolution number 2015-0152, amending resolution number 2014-0102, which authorized the county executive to accept the donation of burial plots within Crown Hill Cemetery for the purpose of accommodating indigent burials by changing the number of plots and the approximate value. Let's go to public safety. Resolution number 2015-0153, authorizing the county executive to accept the donation of two burial plots within Whitehaven Memorial Park from the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. So we'll also go to public safety. Committee report and consideration of a resolution for second reading. Resolution number 2015-0137, declaring that public convenience and welfare requires resurfacing of Fowles Road from the West Corporation line to Pearl Road in the city of Middleburg Heights. Let's we'll go to the August 11th meeting agenda for consideration for third reading adoption. Committee reports and consideration of resolutions for second reading adoption under suspension of rules. Could I have a motion to suspend the rules? Mr. President, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of suspending the rules say aye. Aye. Nays. Ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Resolution number 2015-0131, confirming the county executive's appointment of Sharna Sherman to serve on the Cuyahoga Arts and Culture Board of Trustees. Move to adopt. Second. We've been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, Council President. Um, this was fully vetted through the um, Human Resources Appointment and Equity Committee and um, everything was um, turned out to be fine and we'd like to uh, welcome Ms. Sharna Sherman which is here in the audience tonight. Uh, we did tell her in committee that she could watch us live stream but she decided to come down so we ask that this council uh, seek passage. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The resolution is adopted. Congratulations. And since you're here, could you stand up and we'll just say hello. Thank you. Thank you. All right. 
Resolution number 2015-0132, confirming the county executive's appointment or reappointment of various individuals to serve on the Cuyahoga Regional HIV Health Services Planning Council. Move to adopt. Second. Move and seconded. Discussion? Uh, yes, Chairman Brady, this is uh, a very viable and needed service that we have. We learned a lot in, in committee, and we also asked each candidate that did come before us um, where did they personally see um, where the county could help uh, in moving forward? Uh, we know money is always uh, what people need, but there are other things, other resources, and they shared those individually uh, with us. So we seek passage. I don't think anyone is here um, that came. We also gave them the, the right to watch this live stream, so we asked for full passage. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0133, confirming the county executive's reappointment of various individuals to serve on the Alcohol, Drug Addiction, and Mental Health Services Board of Cuyahoga County. Move to adopt. Second. And moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, Councilman Brady. Um, I believe all of these, some of these were reappointments, and there was a couple of uh, new um, and I do believe that we have, uh, there will be a couple more openings that will be coming up for the uh, Adams Board. So we ask for approval. Thank you. All, uh, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All the, any nays? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0134, confirming the county executive's appointment of Lee Fisher to serve on the Group Plan Commission Board of Directors. Move to adopt. Second. Discussion? Um, I don't see Mr. Fisher here. He was also given the opportunity, but we do thank him for um, wanting to be a part of the group plan commission, and he did share some ideas that he has in moving forward. Um, I believe it was connecting um, more of a connection, not just so, so forth for the park downtown, but how do we actually connect into the neighborhoods, which we thought was very informative. So uh, ask for passage. All, right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0135, confirming the county executive's appointment or reappointment of various individuals to serve on the Cuyahoga County Community-Based Correctional Facility Governing Board. Move to adopt. Moved and seconded. Councilman Conwell, this is your meeting. <laughs> no, it's not. Some nights we have public works like that. So uh, just wanted to say I don't think any of the gentlemen are here. Um, majority did show up for a committee. Uh, they did share um, what they see their role is, what their role has been um, previous. And then we did have a new appointment um, that brings a background of being in probation. So he is looking forward to uh, joining the team. And so we ask for approval. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0136, authorizing a contract with Great Lakes Petroleum Company in the amount not to exceed $759,000 for middle distillates for various county facilities. Move to adopt. Second. We've been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, this uh, resolution was discussed in Public Works. And, uh, you know, as a result, uh, we may be looking at trying to see if, if Cuyahoga County uh, in the future can be uh, a bidder along with cities to see if uh, paying at the pump we can uh, perhaps do better than the state contract. But uh, this is needed because of the, uh, well, it's due. So we recommend passage. All right. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0138, declaring that public convenience and welfare requires emergency repair of Mastic Road, culvert number 4A in the city of Fairview Park. Moved to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Mr. President. This is a, um, obviously this, this is, as it's stated in, in the title, this is an emergency. This road was washed out about a month ago and it has caused not only a quality of life, convenience issues with those who travel on this road, but also public safety issues as it often is used as a corridor to get from 
Fairview Park and points west to Fairview Park Hospital. Uh, the only thing I would ask, and I ask this in committee, is that for issues such as this where we have an act of, of uh, nature that causes this road to be washed out, that, that Public Works create a protocol whereby we may expedite these types of, of programs to get the community back and the road in this situation into a more workable, feasible shape prior to now. This, As I said, this happened over a month ago. Mm -hmm. Is this... Um is this one of the roads that goes down to the metro parks? It, it's right on the rim. Yes, it is. It takes you down through and up to uh, Fairview Hospital. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. The resolution passes. Resolution number 2015-0140, authorizing an amendment to a contract with Ohio Guidestone for community-based treatment center management services to extend the time period to June 30, 2016, and for additional funds. Move to adopt. Second. We've been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. President, these services uh, provide community-based treatment center for adjudicated youth who would otherwise be committed to the Ohio Department of Youth Services. So it's heard in committee, and we would we would request uh, passage. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is passed. Resolution number 2015-0141, authorizing an amendment to a master contract for traditional residential treatment services to change the total amount not to exceed, to authorize funding decreases and or increases, to terminate a contract with the House of Emanuel Incorporated, and to make awards to additional providers. Move to adopt. Second. Seconded. Seconded. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. uh, the juvenile court is requesting a decrease of funding and the termination of services for the House of Manual and increasing appropriation for the other providers, pr providers that are listed on pages 175 and 176. So it's heard fully in committee and we would request passage. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0143, authorizing amendments to contracts with various providers for community wraparound care coordination and family youth advocacy services to extend the time period to December 31st, 2015, and for additional funds. Move to adopt. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this resolution uh, looks to amend uh, this contract uh, throughout the remainder of the year uh, with our tapestry uh, serve system. Uh, it, there are eight agencies, four local community-based agencies, uh, some very familiar names as we know, University Settlement, East End Neighborhood House, amongst others, and four lead providers, again familiar names like Catholic Charities and Beachbrook and others. Uh, the contract is being extended throughout the year and they provide fundamental services that strengthen our family and child uh, relationships and dynamics, and they have outcomes to reduce recidivism. So they do critical work. Uh, the, the backdrop, I would say, is this uh, one-year amendment or extension through the remainder of the year allows the uh, Children and Family Services Department to review how this tapestry network has, has performed and uh, consider any any changes if necessary. Uh, they have worked closely with these eight providers over this, over these uh, past few weeks and months uh, to, to come to a, a, a favorable solution. So I do support this amendment and this extension and ask for uh, your support. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Miscellaneous committee reports. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Public Works will meet uh, next Wednesday, August 5th at uh, regular time, 10 o'clock. Yes. Mr. Chairman, my colleagues, the, uh, the Operations and Intergovernmental Committee will not meet on August 4th as previously scheduled, and we will meet on August 18th only if legislation is referred at the next council meeting, but we will definitely meet on Tuesday, September 1st at 3 p.m. And at that time, we're going to hear a presentation from our lobbyist representatives in Columbus and also a presentation from Mr. Ed Krauss on the uh, 
administrations uh, an update on on the collaboration efforts. Thank you. All right. Yes. A finance and budget will meet August 17th at 1 p.m. to review the second quarter financial results. All right. Uh, human resources and employment and equity have nothing on the agenda. The uh, scheduled health presentation um, has been uh, has not been rescheduled, but it will not fall on the 18th due to the EDI. Um, Mr. Duskin um, has to take his daughter to college, so we'll have to reschedule that. And so we do not know if we'll have a committee on the 18th until the next uh, agenda item. So keep the date open. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, again, nothing was referred to Health and Human Services today. But we do have a uh, committee meeting scheduled for eight days from today uh, for a presentation that will be uh, that's still to be determined. We've had some requests to make a presentation, so we have scheduled the space but we will nail down who that will be in the coming days. All right. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, education environments meeting at 3 o'clock. A bunch of items were referred from the last meeting. All right. Anything else? Any miscellaneous business? Any public comment unrelated to the agenda? Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Puri? Okay, good evening. Good evening. A county executive Yudish, council president, vice president, and council members. The topic of my comment says vote no on syntax in November. We need fair funding for the arts where we all pay, while sin taxes are regressive taxes, what did the council do at the June 23rd meeting? With a discussion under 10 minutes, the council unanimously agreed to place the sin tax renewal on the November ballot, thus continuing to champion what Jimmy DeMora championed in 2006, supporting the arts on the backs of cigarette smokers. I'm actively opposing the 2015 Jimmy DeMora syntax, fighting for the little guy, while the proponents have started an expensive campaign supported by the might of Cuyahoga's corrupt establishment. The $1.6 million campaign supported by the county's political machine, the rich arts establishment, the powerful business community, corporate welfare recipients, we had Mr. Dolan in here, and the plain dealer's propaganda machine is being actively opposed by a senior citizen with his $5 vote no on syntax signs. So far, there have been over 70 hours of demonstrations covering districts one, two, three, and seven. I'm just coming from a four hour demonstration in downtown, that's district seven. For example, on Independence Day, there was a five hour demonstration in Mr. Miller's second district. Mr. Miller, walked past the vote no on syntax signs during the parade. On July 19th, there was a six and a half hour demonstration that took me from my house to Fairview Park in Mr. Greenspan's first district and back. And what a delight it was, Mr. Greenspan, to feel the cool breeze from Rocky River. And on July 23rd, when the proponents, like Mr. Budish mentioned, launched their campaign, there was a six and a half hour demonstration that took me from my house to Lakewood and back. With over 70 hours of demonstrations in four districts, from University Circle to Fairview Park, walking the equivalent of over 200 miles, and the vote no on syntax signs seen by thousands, and with over 600 flyers distributed, what does our plain dealer continue to write? No organized opposition to the renewal has emerged. Mr. President, it takes only one finger to stir the pot. Only one finger. I plan to demonstrate in every district to challenge the corrupt establishment and give the establishment a run for their money. Vote no on syntax in November. I'm submitting a document for the record. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments? Yes, uh, Reverend Pinkney Butts.
before I um, speak to you again, while I have this platform and I have my parents still alive, Charles E. Jackson Pinckney and Dr. Betty K. Butts Pinckney, I just want to just um, salute them and thank them because they're still alive. Council President Brady, and I don't, you probably will never understand why I'm doing this. But I wanted to empower the women in your council this evening to encourage them to stand. There's a songwriter that says, when you've done all you can to just stand there, and then the scripture says, stand there for when things come upon you to stand. Because I, I realize I, I face some challenges uh, today because I have, uh, I've been actually working on a heterosexual uh, legislative bill for, our, for heterosexual rights to be more implemented because I still feel like they're violated. And when I went through the storm in my life, things stripped me to try to take my femininity away from me. Even the, the death of lies told and stripping me of my babies, no one will ever know what that was like. And I want to encourage the women, when you come to these council meetings and you make the decisions and you walk away from where people think you're supposed to be in the kitchen or have your hair tied up or doing some things that people have false perceptions of who you are, be who you are, council women, because we need you. We need you to step out on the forefront and do what you do because being barefoot and pregnant is not the solution because we have to have something else. When I stepped, Council President Brady, into the presidential race for our nation, I didn't just step into it. I've been dreaming of it since a, for a long time. But I, I applaud and, and, and I, I am so blessed to see your councilwomen here because I've lived to see racism at an all-time high and gender discrimination at an all-time high. And today I got very, very frustrated and very upset when I went to that RTA board meeting. Very upset because racism is still at an all-time high. Women are still on the back burner of the platform of things. But I couldn't allow anger to be my food. And I did some things for myself. Thank you, and I will respect your clock. I did some things for myself, because some things you have to do for yourself. But I want you to see that living right doing right and making decisions that impact people's lives to keep families whole, women. Don't go back on it and don't change your mind and don't accept being a victim of abuse no matter what the decision is being made and if you're being victimized even in your homes for being on this council. Don't accept it because you do not have to be a victim. The most important flyer that I did was this one where I state that I've gone from victim to victory because Jesus Christ has been the source of my strength and I say and I speak power and life into you today that you keep coming to this council you keep going into the word of God and you keep doing things and even if you're troubled in the middle of the night with some woman like Camelia Terry Tanisha Anderson and the name the few you get up and you act upon it because we need you. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Reverend Buss. Um, can I have a move to adjourn the meeting? Move. Moved and seconded. All those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.